Hello, my name is Rebecca, and welcome to episode two of my Neutral Network podcast, a podcast series dealing with all things neutral and all things knit. In this episode, I will talk about knitting in popular culture. But before we begin, feel free to grab that cup of coffee and or tea, and of course, your knitting needles. With that being said, let's begin. When one mentions the word knitting, one of two pictures often come to my mind. The first, and perhaps the most common, is the imagery of a little old granny knitting by the fireplace. In many ways, this depiction is noteworthy because it reinforces certain aspects pertaining to family, gender, domesticity, and virtue. In other words, it isn't enough that this little old granny is knitting comfortably by the fireplace. This woman is executing an important task of clothing the family and ensuring the survival and livelihood of the household. The second example is that of the infamous Williamsburg hipster, who knits as a means of advocating a countercultural revolution of sustainability and or self-improvement. Both examples illustrate the diverse and contrasting ways this craft has evolved over the years, especially in my pop- especially in popular consciousness. Perhaps the earliest example of knitting in popular culture is a scene taken directly from Homer's Odyssey. As the story goes, Penelope, the wife of Odysseus and queen of Ithaca, knits or weaves a shroud during the day and unravels it secretly at night. Out of fidelity or loyalty to her husband, Penelope promises to marry the next suitor as soon as she finishes the shroud. Unbeknownst to the suitors, she secretly unravels the shroud every night. While historians and scholars disagree whether Penelope was in fact knitting or weaving, what is important to remember is the role of these crafts, tapestry, weaving, knitting, and embroidery have played not only in our history, but in our pop culture as well. Moving along to the period of the French Revolution, the fictional character in Charles Dickens' A Tale of Two Cities, Madame Defarge, seems to be especially fitting for our second knitting icon. Much more than a wife of a common wine shopkeeper, Madame Defarge carefully knits the names of the revolutionaries' adversaries who will be destined for the guillotine in her network. In this manner, Defarge's knitting is often used to symbolize the terror of the French Revolution, the vengefulness of the common people, and lastly, the cunningness of someone who appears harmless and unsuspecting, but is in fact deadly. However, Interwoven within this story is a great deal of complexity and contradictions. Defarge knits not to heal, but to avenge past traumas enacted by the members of the aristocracy on her family. She's both passive as she knits quietly in the corner, yet towards the end of the saga, transforms into a major character who leads the terror. Literary examples excite. Taking the example of gender in knitting, one often assumes or associates knitting with women. However, what is often forgotten is that knitting in certain parts of Europe was seen as a leisurely activity that it was exclusively reserved for men. In this manner, it wasn't uncommon for male societies and clubs to engage in the craft. Despite this appropriation, knitting has often been esteemed and even reviled for its associations as a solely domestic skill, such as cooking, cleaning, or embroidery. During the height of the feminist movement in the 1960s, women often battled with this craft that had been traditionally seen as keeping women entangled within the sphere of the home. As certain women protested the use of knitting as an archaic tool used to ensure man's superiority, Other women within the feminist movement sought a way to reclaim it. Knitting circles 
were established as a space to discuss politics and champion for activism about issues and topics that directly affected them. What soon became evident is that much more than smashing gender stereotypes, the feminist movement began to look at equality as having no gender, no race, no social status. While this facet hasn't stopped knitting to be associated with something as boring, old-fashioned, and stereotypically domestic, knitting has made its rounds in popular sitcoms. And while knitting is seen in movies throughout the years, I would argue that knitting rarely had any meaningful significance. In many ways, it functioned kind of like a prop. Fast forward to 2021, amidst the height of the pandemic, came the release of popular series Only Murders in the Building. And with it, this release came the debut of a character, Mabel Mora, played by actress and singer Selena Gomez, whose character is an avid knitter. Throughout the series, Mabel is spotted donning a host of beautiful woolly knits. 2021 was also year of the Tokyo Olympics, where Olympian gold medalist Tom Daly proudly showcased his knitted Olympian jacket. In this moment, knitting was once more catapulted onto the popular culture landscape as something trendy and cool, and much more than a craft that mad old aunts or little old grannies employed. With the end of 2021 came a special moment of first, in which the former first lady, Michelle Obama, was featured on the cover of Vogue Knitting Magazine. Despite the negative media sensation that followed, I want to focus on the positive moments that this feature meant for me. Personally, as a woman of color, watching this on the other side of the Atlantic, I found it awe-inspiring that a woman such as Michelle Obama, whose grace, intellect, and elegance is especially noteworthy, has joined the knitting community that I've come to call home. So, wherever you may fall in the woolly divide, one cannot deny the way knitting has left an indelible mark in popular culture. I say all of this to stress the point that knitting's evolution is constantly in flux, and its meaning and context are directly related to historical time and place. For me personally, Knitting can forge a sense of community, as we've seen on online sites such as Ravelry. That is one of the many beauties knitting has to offer, especially in the digital age. In closing, feel free to like, subscribe, and comment. I'm especially curious to know who is your favorite knitting icon. Well, thank you for watching, and happy knitting, and until next time.